With doubtnet, get instant video solutions to all your maths, physics, chemistry and biology doubts. Just click the image of the question, crop the question and get instant video solution. Download doubtnet app today. In this question, a hollow ice cream cone is given which is open at the top. The mass of this cone is given to be capital M. Radius is capital R and height is capital H. Then we have to find out the moment of inertia about its axis. We have to find out the moment of inertia of this cone about this axis. So let's just suppose that here is our cone and uh, this is our axis and uh, let's just say the apex is O. A, B. Now let's just take a differential element here and uh, the slant height of this cone is L. The radius of this cone is capital R and uh, the height of this cone is capital H. Now we have taken this differential element. Let's just say this length height is dl is dl and the radius of this small element is r and the height from the apex is small h. So if we see, uh, let's just say this is theta. So if we see this little triangle here, let me make a magnified view of it. This is our triangle and this small length is dl and this angle would also be theta and this length is dh. So cos theta is equal to dh upon dl or we can write this little slant height is dh divided by cos theta. Now we have to find out the moment of inertia of if we find out the moment of inertia of this little element we can integrate it throughout to get the moment of inertia of this whole cone. This is our strategy. So we know that area of the cone is pi r l pi r l or we can write pi r we can apply Pythagoras theorem in it so in triangle o a let's just say this point is n and uh, this is e h g and f so in triangle o a n this we can write slant height as under root h square plus r square so also the area of element would be this little element that we have took we can just take it as a rectangle where this length is dl and this full length would be 2 pi r. Alright, this is the circumference. So we can take it as a rectangle. So the area of this element would be 2 pi r into dl. dl, we can take it from here. So this would be 2 pi r dh divided by cos theta. Now let's just suppose that the mass per, u, per unit area of this cone is lambda. So the mass of this element would be dm. Let's just suppose that mass of element is dm. So this mass dm here would be equal to lambda times the area of element. Alright, lambda into the area of this element is 
we have just calculated it to pi r dh divided by cos theta so this dm mass we can write it as the lambda here is mass per unit area or we can say capital m was the mass and area is pi r l into 2 pi r dh divided by cos theta we can further simplify it as and write it as dm is equal to 2 pi r dh into capital m divided by pi r into slant height is h square plus r square so we can remove pi from this equation and we can write here as 2 capital M here in this triangle O let's just say this is M in triangle O M F this this are also theta so 10 theta would be equal to r divided by h we can write radius as h tan theta so let's put r is equal to h tan theta here so r is h tan theta into dh divided by capital r into under root h square plus r square and here pardon i forgot cos theta this into cos theta so now we have calculated the mass of this differential element now let's calculate the moment of inertia about this axis o n so the moment of inertia let's just write it as i about this axis o n would be equal to we can just integrate this would be the moment of inertia of this small element and let's just write the expression here this is 2m h tan theta dh divided by r under root h square plus r square cos theta and we can write small r square as h tan theta square so 2 is a constant cap mass of cone is constant radius of cone is constant and the height and radius of cone is constant also here tan theta with as theta is a constant so we can write 2 all the constant part outside so 2m tan cube theta divided by r into under root r square plus h square cos theta and the part which is variable here is h cube dh now we can integrate throughout so this would be 0 to the limits would be when the height is 0 to when the height is capital H so this integration let's just do it separately so this integration h cube dh would be h to the power 4 divided by 4 and the limits here is 0 to h so this would be h to the power 4 divided by 4 minus 0 by 4 so this is h to the power 4 divided by 4 let's just put these values here so we get the moment of inertia about this axis O n to be 2 m tan cube theta divided by r under root r square plus h square cos theta to h to the power 4 divided by 4 also let's just find out the value of tan theta tan theta is in triangle o a n tan theta is equal to r divided by capital h 
so we can write 10 cube theta as r cube divided by h cube so let's just put these values here also let's just find out the value of cos theta here cos theta in the same triangle o a n would be base upon hypotenuse that is capital H divided by hypotenuse is under root H square plus R square. Let's just put these both value here. We get 2m 10 cube theta would be R cube, theta, R cube divided by H cube into H to the power 4 divided by 4 divided by R under root R square plus H square and cos theta is h upon under root r square plus h square now we can simplify this and uh, this r, r cube becomes r square and removing h now this becomes this 2 times 2 would be 4. So this becomes m r square divided by 2. Now we can make a judgment here that since the moment of inertia is similar to a disk about this axis O n. We can Therefore, since this is a cone, a hollow cone, so we can take these little elements to be circular rings and let's just distribute these little rings and project it at the base. So we get a disk in return and we can thus calculate this moment of inertia of this disk about this axis. This would be same mr square by 2 as also let's just suppose that there is a hoop and uh, this is the side view of this hoop. And the moment of inertia about this axis would be same as if I distribute and consider this ring as a cylinder. Mass here is same. The mass of circular loop was capital M and mass of this cylinder, hollow cylinder is also capital M. Therefore, I can distribute the mass about this axis. And I would get the same moment of inertia as mr square. So therefore, our answer simply here is mr square by 2. And we can just skip this integration and all. And just understand the property of distribution of masses. So here our option 1 is correct for class 6 to 12 itj and neat level trusted by more than 5 crore students download doubt and app today